From one islander to another, Isle of Wight Radio proudly presents John Hannam Meets. Delighted to welcome back to John Hannah Meets, one of my favourite comics, Billy Pierce. Nice to see you. You say that to all the girls. No, don't I don't. You, do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking good. I'm all right, mate. Yeah, still alive and kicking, thankfully, yes. I'm getting old now, but I'm still having sex at 69. <laughs> and I only live at 57. <laughs> You actually look good, Phil. <laughs> Last uh, time we actually met was at the Liz Dawn charity show in Leeds for oh, breast cancer. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there I was lot, Jimmy night. Cricket was there yes, and yes. lots of Corrie stars were yes, there. Yes, And uh, you spared me a few minutes like you are tonight at Shanklin oh. Theatre, so I'm um, very grateful for that. It's nice to be asked, love. Thank you very much. And uh, we first met many years ago when Danny LaRue came to the Isle of Wight and you were supporting him. Well, I did New Faces in 1986, somebody might remember that, but it's a long time ago, but it was a, a, a talent show, the forerunner of Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor and all that. And I uh, uh, didn't win, but I uh, I was very... Uh, well, I, it took 12 acts to beat me, and I had eight months' work cancelled. But uh, out of that, I suddenly found myself uh, touring with Danny LaRue, which was a, a bit of a wake-up call, but um, it was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, you came to the Isle of Wight many times. At Warner's Holiday Centres, you did Packpool and uh, Yarmouth and all over, really. Yes, I. Well, with an act like mine, I have to travel. <laughs> I've got an international agent. That means I'm out of work all over the world. <laughs> I started at the bottom, and I like it here. <laughs> you, were, you were lucky to come through a nasty motorbike accident, weren't you? Yes. Um, well, I was actually jumping 14 motorbikes um, in a double-decker bus, and somebody <laughs> rang the bell. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I had two thirds of my liver out, my spleen, put my ribs through my lungs, um, you know, damaged my kidneys and all that sort of thing. So I'm lucky to be here, really. I think your mum, who was a great inspiration to you in the early days, I, yes. think, I think they almost told her that you might not pull through. Is that true? Oh, I didn't. I nearly died. Uh, but, but yeah, I was a, a very seriously injured. But of, of course, I'm still here all these years later talking about it. But my mum's still alive, but thanks for mentioning my mum. She's uh, 91 now. And, um, Is she? Yes, I. Uh, bless Didn't her. She's she run got, a dance school? She time. had the biggest dancing school in Yorkshire, my mum, and discovered lots and lots of people who've gone on to be famous. And um, she's a wonderful lady. Um, but she suffers with dementia now. And, oh. um, so I, that reminds me, I must ring her. Gardener? You were a gardener? Factory worker? <sighs> Porter. Yes. Wardrobe assistant, weren't yes, you? Yes, I did all that. I go, oh, blimey, you reminded me of what I've done, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I did all those things before I um, went to Butlins as a red coat. We used to catch people climbing over the fence and then send them back to finish their holidays. <laughs> <laughs> they were great grinding days, though, weren't they? Oh, absolutely. And the working men's clubs then, I started doing all the, what was working men's clubs in those days, you know, all the miners' welfares and all that in the Yorkshire sort of area. And that's where I learnt my trade, really. Plenty of young ladies at Butlins or on the menu? Uh, well, funny enough, the, the security people used to knock on your door and ask you if you'd got a woman in there. And if you said no, they used to chuck one in. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, all we ever ate was lettuce, so we could eat like one. I'm re yes. <laughs> I remember seeing you live from the Palladium. Take me back. That was daunting, wasn't it? Live from the Palladium. Uh, well, I was lucky enough to do quite a few of those. I um, know, yeah. Um, and the Royals and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, very daunting, to be honest. My knees were knocking just walking through the stage door. Uh, but, you know, I couldn't believe a bloke from nowhere was all of, all of a sudden appearing at the Palladium, you know, so it was great. Yeah. Do you think, Billy, when you're going on, do you think, if there's 20 million watching or whatever, does that cross your mind or do you just forget all about it? Uh, to be honest with you, John, I was never really great at doing telly. Um, I always found it a bit daunting. I'm much happier with an audience, you know, sat in front of me so you can see the whites of their eyes. But um, So television was never my uh, forte, but um, I was lucky enough to be able to do it and it did me lots of good at the time. Yeah, you did programmes like You've Got to Be Joking, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that were a couple of months, that, on BBC. Uh, with Shane, Richie, and there was, a, there was five of us all together. George Marshall. Um, oh, I remember him. Yeah. yeah. Um, did he used to wear crepe or suede shoes in his act? I've got a funny idea um, he did. He used to do James Bond and all that sort of thing, and it was an impressionist. Yeah, I remember him. I don't think he's in the business anymore. I, I did Google him not so long back, and I think he's an estate agent now. Is he? Mm. A bank robber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in 91, you did a Royal Variety, didn't you? Yes. 
I did three of them, to be honest, yeah. and five children's roles. Yeah, I did, I, yeah. They're very lucky, really. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to do all that, yeah. I remember in 92 when, because Des O'Connor, he was fantastic for young comedians. He was, yeah. On his TV show, he had you all on, all he the did. young. And you were on, weren't you? I was, yeah. Well, I did a few of them. Um, did you uh, meet him beforehand, or did you just sort of come on and... Uh, well, to be honest with you, John, I, I did make a big mistake once. I, I wrote a joke, and I completely forgot it when I went on there. Right. And um, so it was about five years before they asked me back. <laughs> <laughs> and he rang me up at home. He rang me up at home and said, am I happy and all that, and, and put me mind at rest and all that. He was very kind to me. He was, yeah. He was a nice fella and encouraging. Yeah. Blankety blank, through the keyhole, you bet. You did lots of sort of shows where you were a personality, didn't you, really? At the time, yeah, yeah. when um, when it all started happening for me, yeah, that, I enjoyed a, a fleeting uh, moment in the limelight, I did. When people used to recognise me in my car. Oh, yeah. Was, you know you've cracked it when they you do that. You had a few catchphrases too, didn't you? You did. Um, yeah, I'll Tell You When was a, a good one. And that came about in Bournemouth when I was working with Danny and uh, you had to stick to your time. Yes. So I think I had like 14 minutes or something. And so if they clapped, that added time on. So I kept saying, I'll tell you when. And then after I'd finished my act, I'd say, you know when I kept saying, I'll tell you when? Well, it's now. And then they all used to clap. So that was one of me. And chuffing, of course. Chuffing is a substitute That's the one I remember. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, uh, chuffing was a, a big thing for me, which it still is really. I still say chuffing. But that's a word that we use in Yorkshire. It doesn't mean anything. It's just... Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. You've done family pantos and adult shows. You've had a sort of a mixture, haven't you, over the years, really? Well, um, you have to duck and dive a bit mm. to survive. Yeah, so I still do my adult stuff, and I'm lucky enough to be able to do, you know, what we're doing today here in a play and things like that. So I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to do all that. Boogie Nights? Oh, I loved that show. Um, that was one of the favourite things I ever did. The, the was boogie, it? boogie Nights, yeah. Jimmy Osman, wasn't it, as well? Uh, well, uh, yeah, he was he was in it, Jimmy, and I did uh, two, two or three years with the Osmonds, so I got, got to know them quite well. Jimmy, Wayne and Jay, really, were the main ones. And Rocky Horror? Rocky Horror. I, did I, you sort yeah. of, what did you wear? Did you wear? I was only the narrator, so I, I, I wasn't in the stockings and suspenders, <laughs> regretfully. I was so looking forward to that as well. <laughs> I was well. going to say, you'd have been brilliant doing uh, that. Oh, I'd have loved it, I would, yeah, yeah. I've never even experimented, though, myself, to be honest. Now I'm a happily married mum. Yes, I know. Mm. Can I just ask you, very early in your life you were married, and we're in Shanklin at the minute, and you, uh, you married a lady who was Miss Shanklin. Ah, uh, she was, yeah. Yeah, she's under the patio now. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, your patio? <laughs> no, she is. Uh, my, yeah. my first wife, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been married twice. The first wife died and this one won't. <laughs> when I first got married, her parents promised me four acres of land and a cow and I never got the land. <laughs> 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 Every time I, uh, we had a holiday, she finished up pregnant. So in the end, I started taking her with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm watching Heartbeat because I'm an old fan of Heartbeat. Yeah, me you, too. You did. Uh, you were in Heartbeat, weren't you? I, uh, yes, one episode. I was a painter and decorator, and my yeah, son. I remember it. My son was. Um, a chess champion chap who was uh, uh, nicking my painter and decorator keys and making a copy of them and then going back a couple of months later to rob all these posh houses. Yes, hmm. and the street. I Jimmy, love the street. Jimmy McGovern, yeah. Well, there's two or three DVDs. I've got them all mm. because every story was a one-off. Yes, it? absolutely. Um, I enjoyed doing that. I got a bit typecast, really. I was a sort of the end of the peer comic, knotted anky, Blackpool type fella in a pub doing the auction and all that and, uh, uh, yeah, with, uh, oh, what's his name now? He's very famous, that actor that was in it, um, Tim, Timothy Spall. Yeah. Who was a very nice man. You know, I was lucky to be able to do things like that. Do you miss the summer shows? I bet you do. The seasons. Absolutely, yeah. It's a different world now. Yeah, but just saying that um, I were in um, Felixstowe last night. Um, where's Felixstowe? It's on the end of his foot. Um, <laughs> um, and it was 42 years ago I did a summer season there did with you? Tommy Trinder. Wow. Mm -hmm. He was a rat misery and all. Was he? <laughs> yeah, was <well>, I. Uh, <laughs> there was a great story about Tommy Tunder because... You when he used lucky to do, people. Yeah, when he used to do summer seasons, he was known to sort of get friendly with the dancers, you see. Oh, and, he still was. He was about yes. 80. Yeah, he had a young girlfriend at that time, yeah. <laughs> and he said he was... Apparently he used jump leads. Yeah. <laughs> when he went off for a summer season, his wife used to say to him, uh, watch those dancers... Yeah. And 
one or two of his last summer seasons when he left, she said, be careful how you cross the road. <laughs> well, I'm married a dancer, so um, there's a true adage in show business, a dancer is for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've got a show to do, so... What's your plans? What would you like to do? You haven't done anything you, you sort of still like oh, to do? Oh, I don't know. No, not much, really. I'm a very happy man. I'm enjoying my life and what I do now. I'm, you know, I've kind of do, done it all, really. I'm, I'm not one of these kill-to-get-on types that has uh, eaten up with ambition. I'm very happy and lucky to be able to do what I'm doing right now at this moment in time. I enjoy the diversity of what I do. You've mentioned that I do my adult shows and things like that. So it's great to be able to do the things that I do as with uh, this uh, play that we're in now, if you call it a play. It's a musical, a farce, a love story. It's an f- interesting concept. Any more plans for plays? Is this sort of whetted your appetite? What, or? Whatever comes along. Um, it's very difficult in this uh, country because people kind of typecast you. Mm. Um, as I was said about this, uh, the street, the Jimmy McGovern thing, they wanted me to be the end of the peer comic, so mm. that's what I'm kind of perceived of. So it's great if somebody gives you a chance to play a character in something you know, where I can show off my talents a bit, really. Mm. Billy, thanks for your time. I know you've got a show. John, you're very welcome, love. Thank you very much for inviting me. And it's always a pleasure to have you on my show. I'll see you in another 20 years. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Christ, I should be old then, mate. (laughs) Who is it? Who's who? Him. Who? John Amam. John Amam. I'm a job. John Amam. I'm a John Amam. John Amam. John Amam. And never mind that. Hey, rock on, Johnny. Hey, see you soon, Johnny, baby. John Hannam meets on FM 107 and 102. I love white radio. I actually caught up with Billy Pierce on the last leg of their first 2018 tour of Seriously Dead, starring Chrissy Rock, Tommy Cannon, Paul Dunn, Leah Bell and, of course, Billy Pierce. That show actually goes back on the road in October and November 2018 when it tours Great Britain. And Billy Pierce is in Panto this Christmas 2018 at the Bradford Alhambra with Christopher Biggins. Keep looking on the Isle of Wight radio website, the John Hannam website and YouTube for more John Hannam Meets new interviews. Bye-bye for now. Isle of Wight Radio.